Hi, I'm Howard Goodwin and welcome to the Great Cypress Lines in Ackworth, Georgia. A little bit about myself, this layout that you're about to see is the culmination of the last 10 years, which I started in 2003. I worked on it off and on for the past 10 years or so, and although this is technically my first model railroad, this is not the first model railroad that I've built. My railroading experience goes back to 1975 when I was a member of the club at Fort Lauderdale. And there is where I learned a lot of the skills that have taken to hone them into what you're about to see in the next few minutes or so. Uh, in Fort Lauderdale, uh, as a member of the, Fort La the Lauderdale Shoreline Model Railroad Club, I was president for about 13 years. I also was president of the South Florida Railway Museum, which is a spinoff of the Lauderdale Shoreline Model Railroad Club. And in 2002, the museum hosted the 2002 NMRA National Convention in Fort Lauderdale. At that time, I did the clinic program, which coincidentally is what I'm doing for 2013 for the Peachtree Express National Convention to be held here in Atlanta. But it's been a very good run for me in, in Georgia since I moved up in 2000. Uh, I discovered the Piedmont Division, a division of the Southeastern Region, NMRA, and after about a year or so of being up here, I joined and got active and all of a sudden found myself in the administration where I served, served as the director of operations for a number of years, also as its superintendent for four years. And believe me, being superintendent of the Piedmont Division is like being president of most any other region in the country. They are very, very active here and there's a lot of things going on. But let me tell you a little bit about the railroad. The Great Cypress Lines is a class two mythical railroad. It doesn't exist. It's a product of my imagination. In fact, I've had it in my head for about 30 some years about what the railroad would do. And while it was originally based in Florida, which is my home state, um, having moved to Georgia, it is now based on the southeastern portion of the United States. Some areas that you will look and see has been reminiscent of the, what you would see in the southeastern portion of the country. And a lot of it is my own imagination. So one of those things that is, has been really impactive is being here, seeing what the railroading is like in Georgia as versus Florida. Also trying to incorporate those facets into my railroad. The railroad was designed as an operating layout. I wanted a minimum of 28 inch radius curves, and I have that. Unfortunately, the aisle space is a little bit narrower at two foot rather than some of the most generous at three and four foot aisles you'll see in some of the layouts you might encounter while here in Atlanta. But the layout does exactly what I want it to do. It works extremely well. I'm very, very pleased with the way that's turned out thus far. And right now I'm into the scenery phase, which is the last phase of layout building and probably the most fun of all. Although messy, it is very rewarding to see the layout start to accumulate its own personality. Uh, with the help of uh, NARB, the North Atlanta Rail Barons, my operating group that I started in 2007, we've been able to get a lot of things done. But at the most part, it's a personal thing. So most of what you see is the work that I've done. The railroad is a point-to-point -point, uh, operation for operation purposes, but it also features continuous run. Some of the areas in the layout, I have two staging yards. I have an Eola staging yard and an Ardsley staging yard. These are named for a friend of mine in Orlando, Florida, now deceased, and named after his railroad, the Ardsley and Eola Central Railroad. Cy Offsayer was a good friend, a layout who we were involved in building back in the early 90s. Uh, we built one of the largest home layouts in Florida in his two-car garage. It was really, really neat, and it was the first application of DCC in the country. In fact, it was the first home layout using DCC in the country, using lens, which was so new that when we were starting to build a layout and operate the trains, we had to call Bernard Lenz in Germany and get him to translate a lot of the manuals because they weren't in English. The cities on the layout were named after friends and mostly family. After you leave Eola Staging, the first city you come to will be Leeds, and that is named for a good friend of mine, a master model railroader out in Oregon, Will Leeds, who was a mentor of mine who taught me a lot of the things that I needed to learn about building models. Excellent model builder, excellent scratch builder. He has all the tools. He's 90 some years old now and waiting for me to get my master model railroad. I don't know when that'll come, but we're hopefully in the next, within the next few months. 
<clears throat> but the city after Leeds is Scottsville. Scott is my youngest son. I have three cities named after my sons. Scottsville is the first one you'll come to. Go around the curve down to the blob where the 28 inch radius is and the next city you come to will be Stevenson. Stephen is my middle son. He works for Conica Minolta. After you leave Stevenson, <clears throat> you go up the mountain through a helix with a 28 inch radius. Go across an area known as Hillside, which is all going downgrade. And then the next city you come to will be Julian. Julian is named after my father. My father was Julian Matthews Goodwin. So, in honor of him, there's the area called Julian. Leaving Julian, you'll go through an area, come downhill, and the next area you come to after Julian will be Piedmont. Piedmont, of course, is named after my love of my life, the division, the Piedmont Division. It also features uh, the Piedmont Locomotive Works. A Piedmont Locomotive Works is simply a facility that was owned at one time by the Great Cypress Lines, but they divested themselves of that facility, sold it to a townspeople for a lease in agreement for servicing the Great Cypress locomotives. So they built a business out of that, called it the Piedmont Locomotive Works, and their specialty is building small industrial type locomotives, which they sell all over the country, in theory. After you leave Piedmont, you'll come to an area known as Timothy. Timothy is the, is the city of record on the railroad. It's an elevated city over the railroad and is my oldest son, Tim. It features a lot of really neat structures in it and a lot of scratch-built bridges, which are really, really cool. Once you leave Timothy, you go around the layout and you'll end up in the, in the Ardsley staging yard on the other side of the room. Both of my staging yards are in the garage and they're 18 feet long. One has five tracks, another one has eight. The Ardsley Staging Yard is the largest. It has its own turntable and engine service facility there. So it, uh, it is one of the large areas on the layout that's 18 feet long and two feet wide. So there's a lot of space and they're on two walls in the garage going through into the layout room. So that gives me a lot of operation and that's what the layout was designed for operation. And again, it's all about creating the illusion. The Great Cypress Lines is a mythical Class II railroad, as I mentioned earlier. It is a, a bridge route between major railroads in the country. Uh, it features uh, Code 83 rail. It is all single track main line with long passing, not long passing sidings, but passing sidings which will accommodate a train approximately six foot. Since it's a Class II, it's not running very, very long freight trains or other trains unless they're through trains. I do have several of those on the operations manifest. But I have some areas of the, of the layout which are hand laid. The Dodge Yard, for example, is all hand laid. The, the switches, the track, featuring code 83 as well as code 70, hand laid rail. The area over the, uh, the aisle, uh, this, the Isle de Abyss Bridge, is also uh, hand laid, code 83 rail, featuring a gauntlet switch and gauntlet track. Again, all scratch built, hand laid. Uh, it's, I spent a better part of a year putting the track down and getting it right before we started operating on it. That was one of the things that I wanted to ensure when I built the layout was that it run as good as it looks and to that end it, I have succeeded. So it is a very good running layout. People come by and operate it on it regularly. They like the way it operates and they do come back.
inside of it. 